Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm your host today, Val Pettigrass. And with me, representing the 5th Assembly District, which includes Suffolk County, is Assemblyman Al Graff. And it is great to have you here. Thanks for having me. You know, most of the time we talk about specific legislation, and of course we will get into that, but we really don't talk about what the role of the Assembly is in all of this. Well, the Assembly plays an important role. We're the opposite, especially you have the minority and the majority. And the majority has a habit of, they vote collectively, okay? So where you'll see the, the minority will vote, they'll split their vote. Some will vote for it, some will vote against it, but the majority vote in lockstep. And what they do is they push through legislation. And sometimes it's bad legislation. So what we actually do is we stand up on the floor and we speak about bad legislation. And we give the Senate a heads up. And then we go back and talk to our senators. Sometimes when you're in a minority, you're like the goalkeeper. And your job is to, to keep bad legislation out of the net, to kick it back. Uh, we've been successful in getting them to pull some legislation at times. But other times, I mean, if people were to come up and read some of the legislation that I've read up here, you would just shake your head. There's no thinking about how much the cost is going to be. Or well, haven't we talked about that many times before, that when legislation is proposed, the cost is to be determined? Oh, yeah. It, well, your, your favorite phrase. They, <laughs> they haven't stopped yet. But, uh, you know, hopefully we're making inroads. We're sitting there in committee meetings. We're speaking up. We're questioning on the bills. You know, there are consequences to some of these bills that they're not looking at. So our job is, is to bring that to the forefront. And we've been successful in getting them to table bills, pull bills off, because they didn't look at something. But at the same time, if it's a bad bill and it gets jammed down our throats, I run to the Senate and I start lobbying senators to make sure that the bill gets killed in the Senate. Because what we do is every bill that comes through, especially our house, we review, we have excellent staff. And the staff goes through all the bills and uh, they'll point things out and then they'll answer questions for us. And there's a lot of times where we're like the gatekeepers to make sure that bad legislation doesn't come in. Well, and you know, when I, I started the show with talking about the role of the assembly, another thing that happens is that a lot of one house bills come through and what that means, of course, is that it doesn't have a, a Senate sponsor. And when a bill is passed, the Assembly and the Senate both have to have word for word what that legislation is. All I's dotted the same, all commas, all T's crossed the same. And so it's almost for nothing. Well, you know, people come into my office, people call me. And the one thing that I consistently say to people is I'm very blunt, I'm very to the point. I don't sugarcoat things. I don't blow smoke at people. If they want an answer, they're going to get an answer. They may not always like the answer. But then I steal a line from Eddie Koch and say, if you support me 70% of the, if, if you agree with me 70% of the time, support me. If you agree with me 100% of the time, get your head examined. Right? Great line. Uh, but, you know, a lot of this legend, when, when people propose one house bills, lucky. Somebody can come into my office and say, listen, I want you to put in a bill. Say, and I'll look at it. I may not believe in the bill, right? Usually I'll say no, but other legislators, to make them happy, will put in a one-house bill. It's not going anywhere. That's it's never going to become law. And there's a cost attached to it to print those bills. Right. You know, every bill that I've put in, I've got a senator co-sponsoring the bill. But you know what? I'm also a realist. The other thing that the majority does in the Assembly is they won't push forward minority bills, right? They kill them. They, <coughs> just for the sole reason that a Republican is on it, the bill will not go to the committee or come out of committee. So I'm a realist. The legislation is more important to me than having my name on the legislation. So right now with my bills, I'm looking around, I'm trying, and I've been successful. I want Democrats to sponsor the legislation. I'll hand it over to them. You know, Truman once said that it's amazing how much you can get done if you don't care who gets the credit. The most important thing to me What a is great to, line. Right. But the most important thing to me is to get the legislation through to actually help people. 
one of the legislation the legislative pieces that I give away is that website common sense give schools towns villages counties an opportunity to go to one site and find the grants that are out there in order to offset their cost to the local taxpayers look that legislation for me is so important I'll stand in the background and let somebody else take the bow as long as you get through and we were talking before the show about how you have lobbied some of your Democratic colleagues to, you know, help you out with this legislation and that you've been successful in, you know, coming across the aisle. Oh, well, they understand, especially with this legislation, they understand the importance of it. They understand that it's based on common sense. All right. Uh, the other piece of legislation is, is when you bid something, over $20,000 you have to bid something out. And what happens is you find when you bid things out, it always costs you more money. Oh, yeah. So simple piece of like we're forcing them to spend more money, taxpayer money, than they have to. So the legislation says if you bid something out, you look at the lowest bid. Then you look at the OGS contract price. Then you check outside. And if you can buy it 10% cheaper on the outside, now you're allowed to buy it on the outside. Where before you had to pay that higher price. The other benefit for this is a lot of people, when they put in bids, they just throw a number in there and go, if I get it, I get it. Well, this will make it where people that are putting bids, if they really want the contract, they're going to have to sharpen their pencils. I mean, we've talked about school districts paying $160 for calculators that they can buy in Staples for $80 or $70. So why are we making them spend more money than they have to? Why would anybody want to make anybody spend more money than they had to? Welcome to the state of the <laughs> You know, we're going to take a break from the legislative issues because we have someone very special to introduce. As a matter of fact, your colleague, Assemblyman Conti, will introduce her. We are now going to take a look at Assemblyman Graff's wife in the chamber and celebrating her 27th anniversary with the New York State Assembly. We'll be back. An introduction on behalf of... Uh uh, Assemblymember Graff. Uh, seated in the rear of the chamber is his wife, uh, Mary, who's a, uh, a registered nurse um, for more than um, 34 years. Uh, and, um, but I think more importantly, um, she has um, dealt with uh, our Assemblymember, <laughs> Mr. Graff, for 27 years. <laughs> Today is their 27th anniversary. <laughs> so if you, can, if you can acknowledge and definitely congratulate Mary Graff uh, to the Assembly Chamber, I'd be greatly appreciative. Well, as you know, Mr. Conti, all we have to offer are the privileges of the floor. I'm sure she's entitled to much, much more than that. <laughs> Well, Mrs. Graff, uh, thank you for being with us here today. Thank you for celebrating this important date with uh, not only your husband, but with his friends, with his neighbors, with uh, his coworkers. So on behalf of Mr. Conti, on behalf of your husband, on behalf of the speaker, on behalf of all my colleagues, welcome to the floor. Again, all we have are the privileges of the floor to offer you. Please enjoy them and come back real soon. Thank you for being here. So they had a few little jokes at your expense, <coughs> but it, it's to be expected because, I mean, 27 years is a long time to be married, and that kind of commitment you don't see all the time. And she married you when you were a police officer. Ah, uh, yeah, we met. She sort of got in a little fender bender when I was a police officer, and I, friends of mine were taking a report. I walked up and I said, I'm going to need your number. And she said to that, I already gave it to the other cops. I, and I said, it's not for the report, this is for me. <laughs> and here we are 27 years later. Uh, you know, she's, she's supported me through all of my endeavors. I retired from the police, or police department. I became an accounts manager on Wells Fargo. She supported me there. Um, then after that, we moved upstate. I became the town supervisor. Went back to school. She supported me for that. Wound up getting my degree in elementary education. And uh, after that, I decided to go to law school, and she supported me there. 
And after I was done with law school, I looked at her and said, I don't know, what do you think, medical school? And she goes, you're done. So that's the one time that she cut it off. But, you know, she's been great. She's been behind me all the way, the legislative, you know, our race for the assembly. Uh, I couldn't ask for a better, you know, home life and a wife that supported me the way that she does. Well, and, and also, um, it, it, it's great to see because um, family means so much to you. We've talked so many times before about, you know, keeping people here in New York State and wanting your family to be around you for the holidays and, and all that stuff. So it's nice that she was able to come up and get a little bit of a taste of what you do. Oh, yep. She, was, she, she still stands behind me. Constantly. Now, get, so. getting back to the legislation that we were talking about before and about how there are obstacles and sometimes you have to reach out to you know, the other side and how they've been cooperative, um, there's a piece of legislation that affects your district. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at it. It is the management of bluefish. And, of course, this is important to Assemblyman's district because of the fishing industry and tourism. We'll be back. And what's happening is that the biggest complaint is when they have flounder or fluke. And the size limitations that the DEC puts on our, our fishing industry forces, are forcing them out of business. Uh, fish that they would have kept prior to this, they now have to give back. And the complaints that I'm hearing is that they're actually, there are people going to New Jersey because they can keep the fish smaller sizes than we can here on Long Island, though they're fishing the same, same waters. And for that reason, I'm voting no on a lot of this legislation. Thank you. And you voted no because of the things that I mentioned, that it'll affect uh, the fishing industry on Long Island, as well as, to a degree, tourism, because people will want to go and use those charter boats. Well, I vote, I'm the only one out of the whole assembly that voted no on most of this fishing legislation. What the New York State is doing right now is abrogating their authority to the DEC, to another bureaucracy. They're not giving them any limitations, right? And the DEC has a habit of over-regulating. Look, when I was a kid, I remember going out fishing with my father. We'd catch flounder, we'd bring it home, and that would be the meal for our family. It was a very bonding experience. Today, in order to catch a flounder, it's got to be 20 inches long, or 21 inches, excuse me. So it's 20 and a half inches. You're talking a fish that's this big, these are round. And you actually have to take a, a measuring right. tape and, and... Right. Or it's a $500 fine, and what I understand, they'll take your boat. Really? So, but New Jersey, they're fishing the same exact waters, and they have less stringent regulations. What you actually have is... Our, our charter boat industry. We have a big charter boat industry. And the charter boat industry is, is dying because you're making them non-competitive. A person from Long Island can go to New Jersey, take a charter boat, fish the same waters, catch the same fish, and not have to throw them back and they can bring them home with them. So, you know, on Long Island, we're losing that Rockwell moment when a father and, and son or father and daughter can go out fishing off the, off the shores of Long Island, catch flounder, bring them back, clean them, and uh, have them for supper that night. And I just think it's, it's terrible that we keep doing stuff like this. And the DEC, I'm sorry, they may trust the DEC to not overregulate, but I've always found that when you give bureaucracies right, unchecked power, it gets abused. And in this case, that's what's happening. Unfortunately, we are out of time, but we do have time to let you out there know how to reach your representative. Please contact Assemblyman Al Graff at 631-589-8685. As always, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. We look forward to seeing you more. Thank you very much. Please join us for our next edition of Assembly Calendar.